I've had a YouTube account since 2013. I've been on the sidelines watching the website grow and change since I was 11, and a good chunk of these changes were ones I didn't like. It seems that every day YouTube is getting more and more, I don't know, corporate's the word, I guess. They're looking for money. They're looking for people who will get them money, and they don't give a crap about the people using their service to share videos without monetization. YouTube's Terms of Service update for December 10th includes a clause that states verbatim, YouTube may terminate your access or your Google account's access to all or part of the service, with the S capitalized as if the service itself is meant to be a proper noun like a defined place or person. If YouTube believes, in its sole discretion, that provision of the service to you is no longer commercially viable. And of course, they go on to say they'll notify you of why you were terminated, but at this point they could put any reason they want in that notification and it wouldn't matter. They're a powerhouse, pretty much a monopoly, to the point where they can do whatever they want and there still aren't any viable options that provide the same quality experience. That isn't to say I haven't been looking, but my other options just don't appeal to me. I suppose that makes me part of the problem. Vimeo is an excellent service, but it has a total storage limit for free accounts, meaning I can't upload more than 5 gigabytes worth of videos to my account in that account's lifetime. I don't have the means to invest in a Plus or Pro account, so a site like that, despite being functionally ad-free because of its memberships, is not for me. And I think the Dailymotion website is but ugly. Sorry, Dailymotion team. And going back to the commercially viable bit, there's no target or safe amount of money you can make to keep your account safe. If I may re-quote, the December 10th ter Terms of Service update states that they can terminate your account if YouTube believes, in its sole discretion, that provision of the service to you is no longer commercially viable. In its sole discretion. That means that, like many of YouTube's other rules, they can apply that rule literally whenever they feel like to whoever the hell they feel like under the incredibly vague terms of you're not making enough money for us. Even if they don't end up enforcing this rule, it's still a disgustingly predatory loophole. That isn't the only concerning update to YouTube's Terms of Service, though. At least, not the only one concerning to me and how I use and enjoy YouTube. In the section, Your Use of the Service, there's a little subsection titled Permissions and Restrictions. In, po in point 9 in that little subsection, YouTube says the following. You may not use the service to view or listen to content other than for personal, non-commercial use. For example, you may not publicly screen videos or stream music from the service. Let's first talk about publicly screening videos. I'm assuming that this is intended to ward off the more reasonable scenario, where people are making people pay to watch a video that they could have just watched at home for free. But it still concerns me because a public screening, by definition, is just showing a video in a public place. Watching football at the local pub is a public screening, for example. The most important thing, however, is that a public screening can be free or paid. So what happens to those free public screenings, however rarely they may occur? Fortunately, they note that as long as it's for personal, non-commercial use, it's alright, but where do they draw the line? Is showing your class a video personal use? Is showcasing an animation you made for a short film you directed at a film festival personal use? This isn't something that I can answer. I'm 17 and I'm stressed. The second part of that little aside also concerns me, the part that says you aren't allowed to stream music from the service. I suppose this could be pushing for more use of the YouTube Music app, but let's be real here. Who the hell cares about YouTube Music? It's like a popular YouTuber's second inactive account. Nobody cares. What people do care about, though, is being able to freely listen to music, and this includes me. I'm on Spotify a lot more nowadays for music, but a lot of my friends aren't, meaning that YouTube is the only real way I have to share songs I like with my friends. There's a bot for Discord named Rhythm that plays music in the voice channels for you, which is so, so useful for sharing music with people in real time. You can just sit and jam out. My mom also uses YouTube for music a lot of the time, and it's the only way that she can listen to a lot of the newer songs that we don't have bought. And we listen to it in the car, we, we share this music in the car, and... I don't know, I... <laughs> That counts as streaming, and that would be against YouTube's terms of service after the update. You're not allowed to play music for your live stream or party from or your party from YouTube, presumably even with YouTube music, as there's absolutely no exception for the separate service written in. On YouTube's about page, they have their mission statement plain for the world to see. There's a link to the about page hidden at the bottom of the sidebar, but it's there. 
It says, we believe that everyone deserves to have a voice and that the world is a better place when we listen, share, and build community through our stories. Despite this, they're actively fighting against this mission statement, doing what they can to make sure they have their thumb on every single channel on their platform. I hate using free speech as an argument because the First Amendment protects you from the law, not the people, but these updates to YouTube mean that they could theoretically censor anyone they personally dislike on their platform. It's genuinely toxic. They can do what they want because they're a monopoly and because they're Google. On YouTube's About page, they state their four core values. Freedom of expression, freedom of information, freedom of opportunity, and freedom to belong. All four of these principles can be violated without valid reason with this update to the terms of service. YouTube can stop free speech on their platform, restrict people's opinions, and restrict open dialogue about various subjects. YouTube can restrict easy open access to information by censoring sources of this information. YouTube can make it so you barely have a chance to get discovered and succeed on their platform, and YouTube can actively push you out. In my U.S. history class in junior year, I had to do an assignment on Captains of Industry versus Robber Barons. I turned it in late, and in the end I pretty much copy-pasted most of the assignment from the internet anyway. I plagiarized. That wasn't cool of me. Barely learned anything. I regret that more now, not because it was wrong, but because I'd learned maybe I'd had. If I'd learned, maybe I'd have something more insightful to say here. I don't, however, so I'll just cite the 19th century definitions of the terms. A captain of the industry was a business leader whose means of amassing a personal fortune contributed positively to the country in some way. A robber baron was a pejorative term for those who were subjected to have become wealthy through various unethical means, one of them being forcing a monopoly on a huge wealthy industry. We all want YouTube to be a captain of industry. Instead, we have a robber baron. There are quite a few videos on YouTube made by people far wiser than me that probably talk about the changes to the terms of service much more clearly and concisely than I do, but very few people in the long run are trying to discuss it. I think it's because the terms of service is long and boring and nobody wants to read it anyway. I'll link some of these videos in the description below. And um, thank you for being my semi-captive audience. <laughs>